God's blessings to all of you. The Lord be with you. Very good. We'll begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. A reading from Jonah, chapter 3. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So... Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey. And he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. As I read the Holy Scriptures, there is an unmistakable sense of urgency in much of the Holy Scriptures. Intensity and immediacy ring out. Jesus calls Simon and Andrew, and immediately they left their nets and followed him. As soon as Jesus calls the sons of Zebedee, Immediately, they left their father and followed Jesus. Everything happens immediately in St. Mark's Gospel. I mean, if all you had was Mark's Gospel, you'd think that everything happened in six months or so. One thing immediately after another. The first words, the very first words out of Jesus' mouth in the Gospel of Mark are urgent. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the Gospel. In other words, don't wait. Don't procrastinate. There's no, well, let me think it over for a week and I'll, I'll get back to you. Now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. When the king says, follow me, you drop everything and go. And then, and then there's Jonah. At long last, finally preaching to the evil city of Nineveh. The Lord had a message of repentance for the people of Nineveh, and Jonah was the exact messenger that God wanted to deliver it. But this was a job that Jonah simply didn't want. Jonah initially told the Lord Almighty to take this job and shove it as he set sail for sunny Spain. But Jonah learned the hard way, didn't he? That the Lord could be rather persuasive in redirecting his wayward messengers. Three days and three nights in the belly of a great fish was all it took to convince Jonah, well, that there's no time like the present. It's all it took for him to be convinced he needed to get on the next flight to Nineveh. When the Lord has need of you, there is no time to lose, no time to pause and ponder. The clock is ticking. Now, to be sure, Jonah had some good reasons to rethink his assignment. I mean, after all, Nineveh was a terrible city, a place full of lies 
and blood. Jonah thought, maybe even hoped, that it was far too late for Nineveh. Any message of deliverance and repentance that he might speak to them was bound to fall on deaf ears. So, I mean, why bother? Well, of course, we might ask the same question today. Why bother? Why bother speaking God's truth in a culture of lies? In a culture that casually calls the murder of the unborn reproductive rights. A culture that calls the castration and mutilation of little children as gender-affirming care. A culture that thinks that the ultimate key to happiness is legalized weed. I mean, can't we pretty much conclude that this culture and its people or a lost cause? Can't we just close up shop, keep the good news of the gospel to ourselves, and hunker down to await the fire and the brimstone? Well, it turns out we can't. It turns out that this dying world and her sinful inhabitants are loved by the Lord. They are died for. God desires not the death of sinners, but that they turn and live, repent, and believe in the gospel. He sent his son to speak the truth in a world of lies. He sent his son into this wicked and bloody world so that his blood would be shed at the hands of the wicked to save the wicked from their sins. Now, judgment is coming, and soon. The appointed time has grown very short, but between now and that deadline with disaster, the Lord has laid down a wonderful way of escape and deliverance through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But then again, not everyone knows this, right? Not everyone understands this. Not everyone realizes just how high the stakes really are. And so the Lord sent a reluctant preacher to Nineveh. And so... Jesus called Simon and Andrew and James and John from their secure and predictable lives to follow him all the way to the ends of the earth. And in a sense, nothing, nothing has really changed since Jesus called his very first disciples. Our Lord still needs messengers. The Lord still needs witnesses. He does. He needs fathers and mothers and sisters and brothers. He needs all of us to be fishers of men and fishers of women. He needs as many people as possible to simply let down the nets and to pull as many people as possible into this boat of repentance and faith that we call the church. The kingdom of God, it is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And the need is now. It's immediate. It's urgent. It's critical. There is no time to lose. And yet, and yet that sense of urgency for the Lord's mission, is often lost on us. Outside of Sunday mornings, we sometimes give scant attention to things spiritual and things eternal. The present form of this world is passing away, but the majority 
of our mental and our physical energy is spent on the present form of this world. I mean, we're all about things temporal, right? Things time-bound. What will we eat? What will we wear? What will we drink? Will Whole Foods have my favorite cheese in stock? What about dinner reservations, concert tickets, spring break travel? And hey, that's fair enough. There's, there's certainly no sin in asking those questions. But today's takeaway from God's word is the immediate, intense, urgent need for messengers, for people like us, you and me, to walk right into Nineveh with an invitation, an invitation that contains the good news about Jesus that truly changes hearts and minds forever. And don't say, don't you dare say, I could never do that. Jonah, Jonah was the absolute worst, the most lackluster messenger that the Lord has ever called. Nobody, nobody did discipleship worse than Jonah. He preached the most half-hearted, uninspiring sermon in the history of sermons. What was it? Forty days and Nineveh will be overthrown. Amen. Jonah and his lackluster sermon leaves no doubt that the results are in the hands of the Lord. And what amazing results. The people of Nineveh believed God. They repented, they turned, they changed, they fasted, they covered themselves in sackcloth and ashes. From the greatest of them to the least. Nobody, nobody saw that coming. Which is every reason then. Every reason for you and me to speak up in word and deed. To bear the message of the gospel on our lips and in our lives. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to speak up about the sanctity of life or about God's design for marriage and sexuality or gender. The need for messengers is immediate. It's urgent. And better still, we have a powerful and positive message. The success of that message, of course, doesn't depend on you or me, doesn't depend on our power or our persuasiveness. The results are always in God's hands. It's not our message. It's God's. He simply invites us to speak on his behalf. And if not you, then who? In Jesus Christ, we can see what God really thinks about the residents of this fallen world. Through Jesus, we come to see how the hands that knit you together in your mother's womb, those hands were later and also stretched out on a cross for you. Those same hands paid the price for all of your sin. The hands of the resurrected Jesus, in fact, are still scarred, and they always will be, even to this day. Loving reminders that he can remove every scar and stain from those who repent and believe. And with those same hands, Jesus will one day embrace you in the joys of paradise. Now, in this world, you know it's true, you usually get what you deserve, right? But with our God, with our God, well, the plot doesn't run so quite predictably. The bad guys of Nineveh, 
they didn't get what they deserved. Jonah, he got to be the Lord's messenger despite a lackluster effort. Ordinary fishermen followed Jesus and became fishers of men. They all received grace and compassion. And that's how it works for every child of God, including you. The punishment, the wrath that we deserve for our sin, it's not what we get, praise God. Jesus takes the punishment. Jesus takes the wrath. Jesus takes our sins. He got what you deserve. And you, you get grace and forgiveness. We call that the gospel. The good news of God's love for you in Christ. That's the message that matters most. A message that you are now privileged to share and to bear on your lips and in your life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I will leave you with a word of prayer, so let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, you have created us and numbered our days. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to use our gifts and talents to rescue life from death until you call the souls of your people to be with you forever. Through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, in whose name we pray and begin this conference. Amen. And amen.